My name is Emily Fonwell Oge of Let Us Farm. So today you are welcome to Let Us Farm page. And um, what we'll be discussing today is we want to know the cost of raising 1,000 juveniles and uh, what will be our likely profit if we do the right thing. So before I go for that, may I use the opportunity to remind you in case you are just seeing me for the first time, this is Let Us Farm page. And all we do here is we prefer practical solutions to our agri problems. Practical solutions to making it big in this industry. And remember, everything we do here is practically free. We are not charging you for anything. So if anybody asks you for your WhatsApp number, that we are forming a WhatsApp group, please discard such people. We are not doing that. Whatever we want to teach, we do it here, and all of us will learn together. So we'll go further and learn more on what is required for us to raise 1,000 juveniles and make good profit. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Like I always say, it is not a must that you will start catfish business with 1,000. Being proud, telling people I have 1,000 fishes, is not the goal of raising catfish. This is just a myopic way people think. Yes, in every business, what you strive for is to grow. You don't strive to do businesses and re remain redundant or collapse. But this is where many catfish farmers get it wrong. And in fact, there are many people that stay abroad that want to do this business that come up the notion that Catfish is just something you put fish and you give them food and they become big. They don't know that like every other investment, every other company, there are strategies that you must have to adopt for you to make it big. You don't just start a business without having any plan and make it big. It's not possible. So you must have to learn and grow, have a plan. Now, we are talking of, about raising 1,000 catfishes and making good gain. I have done previous videos where I quite explained that if you want to do catfish, it is always good to have a projection, to have an idea of what you want to do. Now, you don't just risk 1,000 catfishes and just make business. No. It's either you are choosing to go on the melon side or table size. Now, for our discourse today, we are going on table size. And since we are going on table size, for you to make money on table size, you should have a plan that your catfishes should give you a minimum weight of 1 kg. Now, I have already done videos where I explained the issue of weight. There must be weight uh, variation in catfish because all of them cannot eat at the same pace. Some will be slower than others. So that gives you the variation of weight and the sizes of catfish. That haven't been said, we are looking at today 1,000. Now, inside this 1,000, what we are looking at is from juvenile. So, don't calculate from fingerlings. Calculate from juvenile. As we are calculating from juvenile, we are looking at a minimum weight of 1 kg because we want to make profit. So, we are not stocking because we are stocking because we just want to stock that people are stocking. No. We are looking at to make profit. Now, the duration of this particular project is that we are looking at a duration of four and a half months. The reason why we are looking at four and a half months is to make sure that we'll cover 90% growth of this catfish. Yes. If you want to do more than this, you can actually do more than this. Have another baseline target of your weight. It will give you same result. If, for instance, you want to go like 2 kg, you have to have a baseline target of like five and a half, six months, something like that, so that it will give you a good baseline result. So here, we are looking at four and a half months. Remember, the target, like I said, it's from juvenile. So if you stock anything below juvenile, this is not for you. If you do this, just have it in mind that you are adding another extra three weeks to what we are saying. So now, what we are looking at now is four and a half months. Is it possible? And how do we do this? Right. So let us start from the first thing, which is your pond size. This matters a lot. No matter what you think you want to do, without a good pond size, you are nowhere. Now, for me, standard pond that can give you this type of result. If you are using 
an earthen pond. Look for an earthen pond that is 50 by 20 feet. That is 20 feet breadth and 60, uh, 50 feet long. Use that pond. That pond will give you very good spacing that can achieve that. You can use an earthen pond that is smaller than this. It will still work. But with what I'm telling you now, it's going to give you a very good result. Then if you're not using earthen pond, if you're using a concrete pond, same measurement is applicable to concrete pond, but you find out that in most cases it will be difficult. So what you do is get a concrete pond that will be two. So each of these po concrete ponds should weigh to size 20 feet by 25. Now, 20 by 25 in two places. So if you are using this type of uh, concrete pond, it's going to work. So each of these ponds, you put 500. But in case that your concrete pond is not up to this size, chat me or drop it in the comment section. I will give you another breakdown. So if you are using a tarpaulin pond, same thing with the concrete pond. That is what we use. Now, if you want to use tank, tanks will not go for this. Why? Number is much. But if you insist that you want to use tank, good. What you do is that you go and look for a 2,000 liters GP tank and you get it in 10 places. Even these 10 places will not work. The best that will work will be in 12 places. But because you don't have, you have only 10, you give it a trial. But some of them definitely will not meet up. So these are the, bas the first basic thing you have to get. If you do not understand these calculations I gave you, you can also drop it in the comment section and I will pick it up. Each of these ponds that you are taking should have an average height of 4 feet so that the water level should be 3 feet. If it is anything that is short of this, it is not the best. Why I'm always saying this is that most of us always, they, they, they always believe that what I'm saying I'm saying my own, so they will do their own. It's always good to do your own. You see, most times when I try to give some analysis and people want to do their own, I encourage them, do your own. It's good. When you now do your own and you have the, that's a very good result, we also will learn from you. That's the reason why we are all here, is to learn. So with this analysis now, we have had our space. This is what is needed. The next thing will be how many number of feeds are we looking at? Budget 108 bags of feed. Some will say 108 bags is too much. Good and fine. Remember, my target is to have a minimum weight of 1 kg. Meaning that some of them are going to weigh more than that. Before I go into that section, let me just talk about the feed. So you budget 108 bags of feed. You may want me to break down the feed sizes. I can't do that. Reason I have explained it over and over again. Fishes, most of their feed depends on the temperature of the water at a time. The water pH, these are conditions that make fishes to eat very well at a time. And the neatness of your water. So if I break it down and all these variables are not constant and correct at a time, it means they will eat low. And when they eat low, you will think that there is something else. And then when these variables are very okay, they may eat higher than your expectation. Meaning that if I tell you to buy a certain number of bag of feed at a time, if it finishes, then you will be stuck that you don't have that same number to continue. And that's a bad business. For some people that say they are not the ones managing their business, how do they cope? It's easy. I've already given you an idea. So what you do is every beginning of every month, you tell them, buy maybe buy five bags of this MM that we are using. When we are through, we buy more. So with that, you have the money down. It is the kept money for this project. Some will say they don't want to spend the money. Simple. Go to people that are selling feed. Very big feed dealers. Pay them this money on a calculation you are taking so, so bad that when you come, if it increases, you balance. This is how most of us do. So it's never an excuse that I don't want to... That's why it's not story. Because in every place, you have big feed dealers. So there are some feed dealers that in their shop, they are worth more than 100 million. So go to them. So if you are afraid that you don't want to give somebody your money and your money will disappear, you can decide to divide the money into two, deposit half for carrying feed, 
every week. Let your people go and be carrying feed there. Carry the other money. Go to the bank. Fix it. And tell your RSM that on no account should that money come out until so time of the month. And that will be done. So it's never an excuse on where to keep money that people will not get across to your money. So anybody giving that excuse is lame. We have passed that level. So we have situations that you can lock up the money. Your RSM in the bank can do that for you. You can even post a no debit on the account and you can't get the money. It's just for them to do it. They'll post no debit. So no debit can enter the account. And that means the money is locked up for a particular time. That's how projects are done. Now, having said that, for a start, you buy 1.8, just buy two bags. You can buy two bags or you can buy one bag, any one. You may say price is too much, buy one bag, it will work. So after that one bag, you now switch to buying four bags of foreign feed, 2 mm. For me, I use Cretin. For you, you can use Cretin, you can use Alakwa, you can use Copens, you can use many, very many foreign feeds. They are bound. There are many. So you can use anyone, buy four bags. So when you finish these four bags, you now go to Blue Crown, Vital, all these local ones. You have Blue Crown, you have Vital, you have Eco Feed, you have Top, you have many of them. You have Omega. But for me, in my own farm, what I use is Blue Crown. So what you're going to do is buy any of those brands, buy another four bags. Remember, you buy one bag of 1.8, you buy uh, the, the, the 2 mm of foreign feed, four bags. So when you finish it, now move to the local, buy another four bags. So when you finish, depending on the month that you finish, is when you will now know what the next level of feed to go to. Now, because we are doing four and a half months, we are using practically... 1.8, we are using 2 mm, we are using 3 mm, and we are using 4 mm. This is the only feed we need. Don't worry about 9 mm. That's not for you. It is for fishes that are staying very long. The theories of feed eating it to get more weight is it's not like that. Nutritionists have done it that you eat at your pace. So you cannot expect a man of 80 years to be drinking none of a baby. It's not possible. Then I cannot expect that my baby, my baby will now start eating a food, uh, all this uh, a food that has no bone because he's still a child of six years and he's eating what an adult. It doesn't go like that. So these are some of the calculations that nutritionists use. So remember what I said and the feed breakdown. Remember the budget you're supposed to have. Remember the ones you're supposed to have. Now, if you search on this page, you can see where I wrote feed sizes so like i said you are using 1.8 you are using 2 mm you are using 3 mm you are using 4 mm so search the page to see other feed sizes that you are going to use at each month that you are supposed to buy it buy these feed sizes and keep so you don't need to be buying it but as they are eating you will know the month and the next size to buy now if you are using two pounds fine after once they get to two moons sort your fishes so when you sort it the smaller ones you keep them separate you keep the bigger ones separate reduce the size you are giving to the smaller ones example after sorting it in two moons if those smaller ones are still very small revert back to giving the smaller ones 1.8 for another two weeks before giving them 2 mm while the other one still remains on the 2 mm that they are supposed to be having said that you will now understand that particular issue of feeding so when we move away from the issue of feeding the next thing is management if you are using concrete pond or tarpaulin pond or tanks please don't forget you must change your water two to three days max in a week don't for any reason say you are changing your water once in a week it is a bad business now if you are using etim pond, I have done a video here where I explained water changing, especially in etim pond. If it is a swampy etim pond, you don't need to worry about changing water. But if it's a dry etim pond, you need to change the water once in a month. Dry etim pond are these etim ponds that when you pump out water, it takes a very long time for water to come up. But if it's swamp, as you are pumping, it's refilling immediately. All those ones, you don't need it. But this dry one, you need to at least once every month just pump out and pump in a fresh clean water. 
that would help you to clean up your pawn. So, having said this, some people will be wondering, after spending 108 bags of feed, with the current feed prices of ranging between 12 and 15,000, foreign feed can even be around 22, 20,000 good. And in some countries, depending on the exchange rate, may look very high. Now, you'll be wondering, what will be your benefit? All right. Your benefit is this. If you do what I asked you to do now, let's say you got it somehow wrong, you didn't do very well, you are going to see that inside that pond, some of your fishes may get to 2 kg, some will be around 1.8 kg, some will be 1.7 kg, as the case may be. Now, with my calculation and with everything, we are going to be looking at a situation that we have less than 10% will be below 1 kg. Because if I tell you that all of them will be 1 kg, I'm not really being truthful. So the calculation I gave you is that we have below 10% that will be below 1 kg, which is a negligible uh, number. Then having said that, if you have done this thing, your least profit should be 40% of your investment. Your least profit should be 40% of your investment. And you can get as much as 70% profit from this investment. So if you think this is a good business, go ahead and do it. Remember, the uh, profit I'm projecting here, it is a time that the prices, the selling prices is not high. For instance, now in some places, a kilo of fish goes at as a, one kg and above. It's between 1,003 and 1,004. Now, somebody last time told me that in their place, it sold for 1,006 and 1,007. Now, and I'm working on this same projection. So, if when you are selling, you are lucky that at that time there is scarcity of fish, it simply means that you, um, your markup profit will go higher. What this means is that you may even make as much as 90% profit. But remember, that is situational. There could be reasons why that will happen. So, I don't know if I had made you understand how you can be able to start with 1,000 juvenile. But please, if I said things that you do not understand or you want me to clarify more, drop it in the comment section. And is there any further thing you want me to explain further? Drop it in the com comment section. Then is there any topic you want me to bring? Drop it in the comment section. Hey, y'all, come look at this.